Spencer Barrett, Christopher Bird Van Putten, Robert Stern, Lieutenant Rutherford, Corey Bradley, Trisha Davis. We're here on Sunday, June 5th. And we are in nature at Lithia Park. We're continuing the Echo Summit. And this was intended to be quarterly. So yesterday, the ideal was to follow a indigenous ceremonial change process template. And that was uh, introduced. It was, I gave the orientation. We were to do some examples and then uh, reconvene today. Now, um, thank you for all the planning and resources, the time and the space, the people's interests, presence, and commitment to continue and invite others to join in planting seed ideas for uh, reframing what I'm calling win-lose win is no win for everyone. Destructive and death producing choices, decisions, and outcomes. A reframe means to remember and reawaken to win-win, constructive, and life-affirming choices, which is co-creative, situational, leadership, and policy. This means that every person's gift contributes to the collective survival, a family, a community, a nation. And I want to bring everyone's attention to the word pseudo-community because that word describes a formal structure of any domain, law, government, health, education, any domain that is existing in a formal structure, it can be, it can be efficient and very efficient, doing the wrong things for all the wrong reasons, in a wrong way. What do I mean by wrong? What isn't good for us, and most of all, it doesn't work. That's why the word pseudo-community comes from M. Scott Peck in his book called A Different Drum. And pseudo-community is coping. It's a coping process. This indigenous ceremonial change process is not a coping process. It's a healing process. And that means it's a curing process. And curing means it's a correction. And the correction is a reframe of our thinking to its appropriate function. To choose and make decision and to manifest the outcome of everyone using their gifts to, to win and we benefit in terms of our collective survival. That's the law of the universe. That's spiritual law, natural order, laws of nature. Yeah, it's only appropriate that we end up today in Lithia Park with the natural order in the natural setting. And the reason why I'm starting with the the container and the context of the indigenous ceremonial change process because that's what I was invited here to teach. And to teach it means to implement it. A true, a true teacher teaches and doesn't withhold the knowledge because knowledge not shared is dead knowledge. And facilitation means to set up the optimal conditions for teaching the indigenous ceremonial change process. And 
what is a given, what is predictable is people will begin to um, reproduce pseudo community. And then uh, his next stage, M. Scott, I'm talking, referring to it now and doing a comparison. His uh, framework is called uh, P uh, Building Community by Peacemaking. And I'm going to describe it to you so that you can understand the word pseudo community in that context, in his context, in Western culture, in the literature, in the book A Different Drum. So his four phases of building community are, are called pseudo-community, which I described to you, defined for you. Did everyone understand that? That it's a coping process, it's not a curing, it doesn't make correction, it's just a formal structure without uh, correct, without identifying an out of balance condition and the root cause that keeps it out of balance and it does not make the correction for undoing the root cause. That's what produces the reframe to creative solutions. You hear the sequencing? Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, now I'm going to go back to M. Scott Peck and describe his four phases of building community by peacemaking. The first one is pseudo community. And then I said that <clears throat> it's predictable. <clears throat> Every group, any group, will always um, go back into pseudo community. And that's what I saw during the day and, and in the evening, back into pseudo community. As soon as we went to the table, then it was, uh, the, the, the topic wasn't accordingly to the um, illustration on the on the screen of the sequencing. Did you did you know did you see what I'm talking about? Do you understand what I'm talking about? I'm just going to put in terms of numbers and in direction. East 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 is one. South is two. West is three. North is four. Five is center, and the um, practical application of it. So in those, um, in those um, categories right there, when we went to the table, the topic became topic number three, community. See, and um, it was leadership and policy. Are you aware of that? Okay, so now M. Scott Peck says, so then you're understanding what I'm observing from yesterday, and we're picking that, we're picking up there today uh, to, for me to describe it to you and to teach you about it so that you can understand when I'm comparing something. And when I'm comparing something, that I'm using the art of making distinction. That's what takes our topics out of dualism. I'm not talking in either or, for and against, or right and wrong. I'm not talking in dualism. I'm talking in sequencing, and the, and the uh, M. Scott Peck's four phases of building community by peacemaking is pseudo community and, and chaos, and then chaos is um, polarizing people into dualism and for and against, right and wrong, good and bad and um, one up and one down and war warring because that's two actions. One up and one down is escalating and that's war. So you, can you see the two, can you see and hear the two actions? One up and one down, but it's escalating into war. All right, that's what, cha what is cha chaos, is conflict due to dualism. And then that's second phase for, for M. Scott Peck. It, um, then his third phase is emptying. In emptying, he says, M. Scott Peck says, examine the unex 
unexamined assumptions. And he says in his book, that's where people just absolutely refuse to do. Let's say, for example, I use what applies to all of us. I, I use um, for this country, this example that we're in a war for over a decade. That's the out of balance condition. The root cause I am identifying as defending our addiction to greed. So when we get to phase two in the ceremonial change process to the emptying, that would mean that each person then would have to acknowledge their own addiction to greed and make those corrections. Okay, so M. Scott Peck is basically doing something similar with the word emptiness when he says examine unexamined assumptions. And he documents in the book that in his whole case study, practice, clientele, and group work, you know, group dynamics, that's a whole domain with its own language, group, group work, group dynamics. He says that people just, they don't know how, they don't want to, they refuse to go into, into emptiness examining their unexamined assumptions. Therefore, the society, the, the, the family, the community, any organization, a, a government or non-government, a religious, a political, a nation, cannot do peacemaking for that reason. So they cannot get to stage four, which is building community by peacemaking. And the whole definition of community is living in, uh, living, putting into action. Peacemaking is an every way, everyday way of life. So peacemaking and community would be synonymous, right? Mm -hmm. Now, that's where the word pseudo community comes from. So I refer people to the literature and to that book because of, I use the word pseudo-community and his definition when I see people going back into this win-lose system. I am taking them through this process and then people just automatically go back into this in here. So they're they're doing the same. They could do it. <clears throat> yes. So they're doing the same thing. They're doing the same thing that he observed and wrote about because that book was published in 1987. See, and so I use his word, his word pseudo community to say, let's not revert back into pseudo community because what is the consequence? Chaos because it's win-lose, it pits one against the other, and we cannot build community because there's no peacemaking. So look at the events that took place from yesterday to now. Can you observe it? We experienced it, didn't we? Anything and everything that I talk about is going to show up in the now. It's predictable to a T, to the nth degree, because it's actual and some of the players aren't don't always know that they don't know that they're one of the players in here so you follow me when I'm making a comparison with um, M. Scott Peck's Western model and then the indigenous ceremony change process I'm using the art of making distinction to make a, a comparison so that I can use his word accurately with you understanding the process of what, how he uses it. And also in my master's uh, level work in inquiry and research regarding whole systems design or systems theory is the leverage point. 
is a small change that makes a big change. So I have identified in the, for the ceremonial change process that it's win, it is win-lose, destructive and death choices. I identified the leverage point for the planet, which is a small change that makes a big change. When in fact our brain is, whole, our whole brain thinking is we're built in for win-win, constructive and life-affirming choices, but we have been programmed and conditioned to participate, to be recruited to participate in our own demise by win-lose and nobody wins and destructive and death choices. You following me? Mm -hmm. So I'm setting up a container here for our discussion today. We're going to explore in de detail, answer your question. I want to build this understanding and this, this container for some of the use of the words that I'm using. And I have this uh, chart here. So I'm going to finish describing this and then open it up for questions that we can explore today. But what it took for us to be together at this time, in this place, I want to thank you, all of you. Now, you know from what I said yesterday and maybe even times that you heard me before in Ashland at the Armory or at the Haven or somewhere that I have told people that we're, we are only existing in natural order. We can't be outside of it or separate from it. So this chart and this illustration is just a, a picture of the programming and the belief systems and the conditioning. What you said is uh, addict addiction. People are addicted to it. So let me re let me uh, review these these players, and then you can understand and see it because the players produce a life script. And uh, you will understand that because then I will compare it to a male and female gender life task. The male and female gender life task is here in the natural order illustration. But first I'm going to describe to you these players. The system, what we call the system, the worldwide system, the American system, what does that mean, the, the system? And it means the infrastructure and the construct is based on manipulating the world resources. So racism is a construct for manipulating the world resources. And so that's a belief in inherent superiority, privilege, and entitlement. That's the 1% at the top of the triangle on the wind. Il illustration on the wind, that's the 1% at the top. And so this system, uh, the designers of the system, the definition of a uh, perpetrator is to, de to uh, create the laws, the rules, the regulation, policy to perpetually win and and that is done by blaming the victim it's your fault so you owe me taxes late fee interest penalty um, fines time in jail and prison and then the predator is the lawyers and the businesses who help the perpetrator win in the system. So this is what we call the elite, the aristocracy, the, the oligarchy, people who are manipulating the world resources. And of course the 1% are, are the money changers, the, the, the Illuminati. Then, 
At the bottom of this triangle that's pointing upward to represent when and how the money goes from the poor, the poor, the poor to the rich every generation. At the bottom of the triangle, it pits one against the other. It takes any form. Whites against blacks, um, Christians against Muslims, or Protestants against Catholics, um, can be any form of us against them. It pits. You can see it at the bottom of the triangle. That is the mechanism. It's the mechanism to pit one against the other. It's a mechanism for win-lose. So if we're arm wrestling here, then his team would voodoo me and say, you're old, you're white-haired lady, and you're weak, and they would voodoo me, and then he would win over me, and then they would take everything from me. But if I'm young and I'm a bodybuilder and um, somehow uh, he isn't physically capable of taking me down and arm wrestling, then I, I win, then all my people, then we, we get the spoils. Winner take, we win and winner take all. That's what I'm calling mechanism for win-lose. That's the triangle pointing downward. Now the players in the, in the, in the uh, triangle pointing downward, keep in mind that women, historically women and people of color in this system have to agree to lose and pay to lose. And there's historical reasons for that, that we could go into the de details if you're interested in. So that rescuer and enabler means unhealthy helping. It means to help someone to stay the way they are. So health and human services. Now I worked for health and human services for over 20 years. And I handle federal, state, county, and tribal contracts for accountability and client services. Did budgets, wrote grants, competitive grants, um, defended budgets, got uh, money, administered it, designed programs in behavioral health, mental health, social services, and nothing works. Saw millions and millions and millions of dollars because res rescuer enabler is to perpetuate the dependency to the system. So cre uh, intentionally create, arti artificially create dysfunction, blame the victim and say because of you, then uh, that's homeless or food stamps or sickness or anything to, to create that dysfunction, then blame the client and say, well, you, you, owe, me, you owe me my paycheck because I have a job off of you. Get that? And then, persecutor over here is jail, prison, judge, court, police, bail bondsman, industry. And then the victim is the client, the clientele. This circles in the middle of this triangle is another is another whole chart that has to do with chemical dependency. So you can see the chemical dependent on this chart is trapped inside the triangle going down. So the chemical dependent is numbing the pain. Numbing the pain, alcohol and other drugs, substances or this is uh, a way to get into the body ingestive, the ingestive addiction. So you see these lines around the triangle going down. This system operates on lies and blame. The lie, the lie is win-lose and blame is because you're the problem you own. Me. You overdraft, so pay me the fee. 
you know you're dealing with a blamer when the first word out of the mouth and thereafter you can start counting how many times they have used the word well you started this well you said this you're the one then you know that you cannot do moral reasoning or problem solving problem, problem resolution with the blamer because the person set you up to fail to blame to collect from you now you own me you following that okay so when I get through with this uh, description right here, then I'm opening it up to questions because uh, I'm providing the context and the container for comparing by using the art of making distinction. I'm checking with you to make sure you're following me so that when we ask questions and we and we what we do today does not go into pseudo community. Mm -hmm. Yes. Everywhere, all the time, people get just automatically go into pseudo community and become a conduit and don't even know that they don't know. So I have to uh, clarify, inform, and describe and define. That's what I'm doing right now. Now, the, um, the lines around here, watch this, I'm going to show you, we're similar age category generation here, you're basically in the same, we might have two generation here, so that, um, me as an American Indian, um, I say something that alienates somebody and touches their but buttons, okay? Let's say it's this phantom person over here, and that person then um, attacks the messenger. When that person attacks the messenger, they're going to say, you said this, how come this? And they're going, that is an attempt to, to pull me into dualism, to make me a, you said this, and now I'm being intimidated. That's a attack the messenger. Now tell me the answer. And if I say there's no answer in the dualist, in dualism, they get even angrier. So when they get angry, that person gets angrier, let's say because he's of my generation and he jumps in and he rescues me and he tells that person something. Uh, that's not necessary here, let her speak or whatever form it takes. Then we've set up here that I'm the persecutor. This a person, a person made me the persecutor of him or her. And when, when I bec that person made me, they have made themselves the victim automatically and then he's the rescuer and so then you all are uh, our friends or whatever you're the same generation and then somebody else uh, when he rescues me he becomes the persecutor and, and, and she becomes the victim and we start to all change roles and then somebody else jumps in and they become the persecutor of him and then I'm not a rescuer so I don't rescue him but you know she's got a dad so she jumps in she's a female she's got a dad and she jumps in and rescues him and then it's and then we're on automatically that's domestic violence in the home it's domestic violence elsewhere in politics and in the community it's called lateral violence but it's the same process do you follow that mm -hmm. that's all that's going on on this planet that's the only form of communication that's happening here all the way to 
the Leonard Peltier issue or any other issue or Snowden or any number of people that we say or identify you as the as the identified uh, it's your fault we assign blame that's the word I'm looking for we assign blame so then we're going to punish you so you're the scapegoat and then there's the victim mm -hmm. playing the victim the woe is me principle Okay, we'll get that. Get to that in the, in the questions. Um, because you're using the word playing, playing the victim, then you're you're uh, informing us that why I call this a life script. That's a script. That's a victim life right. script. Okay, so. Um, I think that I'm to a place where you're following me, you understand what these lines illustrate, and they're accurate to the nth degree, they're accurate to a T, you can map them out <coughs> frame by frame, and they're predictable. Anywhere I go, any age, any race, any language, before I go there, I already know that this is going, this is, this is the, uh, this is the life script that our people people are addicted to, and they go into them automatically. Now, I'll uh, leave it at that for right now in terms of informing and clarifying and setting up the container and the context for our for our for today's discussion in terms of questions and more details and wherever this group wants to go. I wanted to make sure and be clear that you understand what the art of making distinction is and also that I reviewed from yesterday and yesterday to the evening to this morning to now. Right? Okay. Thank you. Any questions, anybody? I have a uh, topics, the nature of language and um, betrayal story, but I guess that fits into life script, kind of criminal mind developing that. Mm -hmm. Say those. So the say, two topics that I'd like to say know more about. Say the three words today um, and let me also write them down so I can refer to those three specific words because they are somewhat similar and somewhat similar. The betrayal story and the life script and the criminal mind creating both of those? Or just the betrayal story? So I guess you could have a cool life script. Okay, one, two, three, give them to me. <laughs> um, nature of language, betrayal story, and criminal mind. Okay, so what is your question? I'd just like to know more about those, really. We had a discussion on the nature of language and the limitations of different language origins and yeah. development. Uh, that's a huge conversation. Yeah. I'm not sure. The time. You know, we have a time limit, but we also wanted to perhaps get into the meat of some of the, the table discussions. Okay. Yeah. Where I'm a little worried as to how much time we could really donate to those, having addressed them yesterday. So should we should we vote it's on some not, topics? It's that not saying that no, we, we're we not can't talk about it. <laughs> we're not going to vote on topics because he's asking me the question. And um, it could be pretty gonna, short. I'm going to clarify what it exactly it is that you need clarification on the nature of language. Exactly what I'm interested in. How language, the topic started on pseudo-community and the listeners I think should know how the nature of language promotes or has an effect on community as well as how those relationships to pseudo-community 
and how they promote or um, continue the effect of pseudo. Yeah. Is this specifically for the English language? Hold or on. languages Hold in general? Hold on, I'm answering his question. Okay. And also, I just had a clarification, though, to try to... I guess this total language. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, the nature of language is that there's living words which means the vibration is resonating and in line in alignment with spiritual laws and nature not laws of nature natural law natural order so indigenous language speak in those vibrations so the english language is a commerce language and it is a trade language and it was intentionally artificially designed for dysfunction to be abstract meaning that that the vibration of the sounds and the abstract alphabet which are not a hieroglyph they're not a picture they're not a hieroglyph so they're not connected you have to make words and sentences and paragraphs and then it goes from left to right and then you say one word and it's spelled two different ways and it has two different meanings. So when you say nature of language, you know, that, that's the two thinking systems. So there's intention and there's only two intention. There's only two. There's one that's destructive and one is constructive. Destructive and life, destructive destructive and death producing and constructive and life affirming there's only two intentions which goes into the nature of that language is that helpful yeah and then that intention is what is manifested today so we could say that it it creates our reality but it doesn't create our reality either because what is real has been made unreal and what is unreal has been the attempt has been made to make it real you hear the switch okay the switch is to make the real unreal and the attempt to make the real unreal so that's the condition <coughs> and the nature of, of language that that is the root cause of the betrayal story and the betrayal story is somebody has something that I don't have so I have to do enemy creation and I have to dehumanize so my language has to be in such a way that I create and manipulate language in such a way that I justify it. When I betray creator, I betray myself and I betray others. And I have a way of justifying my not self. which is the life script. These players that I just described to you are the not-self. And so conflict, I'm conflicted already. The war within me is projected outward and I'm calling that self-delusion and illusion. And that's the language that people are speaking today on the earth. That's why we're all trapped. We're all trapped and entrenched in the thinking system that Einstein said we can't solve any problem with the thinking that caused that problem. That's why it's a betrayal story. Now, this is what the, this is what the criminal mind looks like. 
criminal mind is using our thinking for what it's not for and to limit our thinking which is oppression right is it oppression <laughs> to use our thinking for what it's not for it's not for enemy creation so the criminal mind is oppression external oppression its power over and then we internalize that oppression and then that's depression that means we're immobilized and that's depression and then that's the belief that there's no solution but it's not true because at the bottom of that triangle going down when the triangle goes down for lose at the tip there that's suicide so the criminal mind is telling the body wrong wrong information This illustration is basically the same illustration and it shows us what we what we actually look like. The, the precious child of creator and creation, our sacred self in our sacred place in the universe. Well, and this represents, this represents the bottom circle. Can you see that what I'm, um, excuse me, it represents, what I'm gonna show you represents the bottom circle. I'm gonna switch it here. And when I switch this, then um, you will you will see that um, this is our condition in this bottom circle on this chart. Can you see that? Because this is while we are existing how this is illustrated to you there is no uh, aura this is not standing beside us which I'm calling the spirit of hindrance it, it, it's on us and in us this is on us and in us so that's the sum total what we call aura in our thought forms so that the criminal mind is the block right here between our brain and our soul. It doesn't, the block doesn't actually exist. It's the programming and it's the conditioning that says that we believe we're outside of and separate from nature. This block. This one right here, so you, you see that block. So Western people have this block right here, the belief in separation and outside of na nature, being outside of nature. And this one looks like a T. This is a compartmentalized, compartmentalized, dualistic thinking, for and against, right and wrong and good and bad. So this is the condition of what I'm calling the criminal mind because then it's using our thinking for what it's not for. And it's not, what it's not for is win-lose and destructive and death choices. Because our whole brain thinking is a figure eight, nothing in nature polarizes. If you know what a Mobius strip is, it's sunset and sunrise, our whole brain thinking, our divine feminine and our divine masculine. It looks like a. That's the time it's right. Yeah. So, oh. thank you for coming. What's your name? Karen. Pardon? 
Karen. Thank you. Welcome. I think it took us, I see, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1. It took four hours to find ourselves here. It actually took us two days, so you did very well. <laughs> thank you for being interested and thank you for looking for us and finding us. So we're um, using um, illustration to speed up some of the question here. And, and so you've asked a question that has three different Corey. words, Corey. but you see Where how they're interrelated. Did you yeah. hear how they're interrelated? So that the criminal mind creates this spirit of hindrance in our aura. And then, what is the maladaptive emotions I have on here, a whole list. Hate, envy, greed, jealousy, anger, shame, guilt, fear, lust, remorse, regret, regret on and on, whatever maladaptive emotions do not and cannot exist in the earth, water, fire, and air. So they cannot and they do not exist within us. The criminal mind calls them in these spirits to tell the body wrong information. The criminal mind is uh, the betrayal story, which is Lucifer, Lucifer, which means the lie, the first lie, and dishonesty and defiance to Creator to deny the oneness of Creator and creation. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of words to say one word in Navajo. Kojo means the all-encompassing concept of holiness with, a, with H and holiness with W. Kojo, we can't be outside of or separate from it. There's no competing collectivities that represent competing ideologies. I have to say that in English, there's no way to say that in Navajo language because when we say hojo, it doesn't, the language doesn't exist in the inverse. It exists in the affirmative. See? So you see how I'm doing gymnastics and I have to say stop because of my age and just conserve my energy to not get pulled into the, into where I, ha I am doing the surgery for this, this uh, uh, deconstructing so that you all, you, all you, all you, you, you can do the reconstructing for the infrastructure for your future and your life. You understand that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not a conduit for, for the uh, spirit of hindrance. I'm doing brain surgery here. And we're not just sitting here visiting. We're, uh, we're, just, we're undoing, we're dismantling, deconstructing these thought forms military, government, all the lies. And were we 50 to 100 people, we could take them down. So all you generation, that's why I'm traveling to be visible, to educate, in order that you carry on and for me to give you the seed ideas, to, to thoroughly understand this, so that you don't get caught up again and sit our community and chaos and repeat for your generation the same folly of dualistic thinking and win-lose and no win. So we covered the nature of language, we covered how it's related to the betrayal story and what exactly is a criminal mind. It's 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 non it's non reality and it's non function except as a belief that manifested the sim symptoms that reinforce the belief. <laughs> Following that, mm -hmm. that's why I have these illustrations, because then, over here, so we... Gonna, can I video you holding up those different ones? Yeah. You? This is... Um, I'm going to pass it on. And so, um, and so, so I'm going to uh, hold them up for you so that you can uh, 
see what I'm talking about. You can see how the mind-body dichotomy that's illustrated the block above the head, that's a mind-body dichotomy. So the Western philosophers who are the empiricists like Rene Descartes and so on, all the way back in history to, uh, to who was it? Was it Aristotle or Socrates? One of the two. Uh, further than that, it was Heraclitus or... <laughs> okay. Yeah. So that's a long ways back in history that Western philosophers has carried, ha, ha, has led people astray with wrong teaching that causes delay. And delay is what causes suffering. And when, when, when we're existing in this state and we're told that we're, we're existing, that, that we're existing in our deficient self-image, then uh, there has to be an external remediation process to some end state of enlightenment, of education, of personal salvation, and redemption. So all the belief systems, religion, philosophy, and theory require that external condition programming to some linear sequential end state. So if you were there yesterday and you remember my answer to the person to deconstruct the word evolution, did you watch that deconstruction? Keep in mind when we're deconstructing, the spirit of hindrance is right there big time. When we're deconstructing before we can reconstruct, and that's exactly what happened between yesterday and today. The spirit of hindrance, it happened before the summit, it happened on the internet, it happened from an uh, indigenous person already being the conduit for it. So you see it playing out, what I'm talking about? Now, my job is to remove these right here. So if I'm doing a brain surgery and I say, don't move. I'm doing a delicate brain surgery. with speaking it into the etheric, it's truth-telling, it's truth-telling, and then you are a witness. So we're not in charge of the miracle. We're not making the miracle happen. We're, we're here with our intention in a body on the earth. That's our part. That's all we have to do is speak it, the truth, and then you wit, then you have a witness and the, and the spiritual beings that protect us and guide us are in charge of the miracle. There are, that's, it's already done in that realm. Remember, love is faster than the speed of light. We're doing work that has no constraints in time and space. And this is, this is actual. So that um, in this This is because this is not existing. When I refer to bottom circle and top circle, I'm referring to the bottom circle as a win-lose circle illustration and the top circle as a win-win. And when I talk about reframe, it's the indigenous ceremonial change process sequencing that facilitates the remembering and awakening to the appropriate function of our whole brain thinking, which is the creative imagination, which is intuition. For what? For the creative solution for our collective survival. <laughs>